Welcome back, everybody, to another edition of the Auburn Undercover Podcast uh, on the 24-7 Sports Network. Hosting today, Christian Clemente, joined by Jason Caldwell. Uh, Before we get into anything, guys, if you're watching this on YouTube, if you're just listening to our podcast, a good portion of y'all are probably already subscribed to AuburnUndercover.com. So everything that we've talked about on here, you've already read. You've already read in detail. Uh, You know, we're only touching the bare bones a little bit here on the podcast. But if you're not, we're actually celebrating 15 years of Auburn Undercover and have an anniversary special at 75% off. So head over to AuburnUndercover.com. Check us out. It's right there on the homepage. It's like the third story. So as soon as you go to the front page, you'll see it. Um, So definitely, if you're not already a sub, check us out at AuburnUndercover.com. With that, I'm not going to waste any time, Jason, because we got some pretty huge news, um, some unexpected news on Sunday. As Perry Thompson tweeted out his plans, the five-star Alabama wide receiver commit, to attend Big Cat Weekend, which is at the end of July. And, Jason, that is just massive, massive news for Auburn. It is. Um, you know, it, it's really interesting, too, because this is a guy that, you know, every time we talk to him, we, we made a trip to Foley to, to see Perry, talk to him. Then every time we talk to him, he maintains, hey, Auburn is absolutely in this. Um, here's – as a, who is it, Jeff Foxworthy used to say, here's your sign. Well, here's your sign. He, you know, to show you how how much Auburn is in this, he's, he's planning on being at Big Cat Weekend. Um so a long way to go till December, um, but Auburn has absolutely put themselves in position with one of the top wide receivers in the country, um, and they've done it just in a matter of six or seven months. Um, this was not a re- relationship that was cultivated over two years that has blossomed under Hugh Freeze and Marcus Davis and, and Zach Etheridge and his staff. It has become something that has come up out of thin air, basically, under this staff, and that's the most remarkable part of this. So, um, yeah, really interesting news uh, to see that he plans to come back to Auburn instead of going to Tuscaloosa. So, um, we'll see what the future holds for this one. But um, hard to, to hard to have a a better thing to start a show than to talk about um, one of the top targets on Auburn's board, regardless of position uh, that's planning on being back on campus this month. Yeah, you touched on it there a little bit. What's been so interesting with Perry Thompson is you know the old staff didn't even offer him. He was committed to Alabama since last June, so June of 2022. He gets offered by the new staff, the new Auburn staff. The date was January 11th. Um, I remember that from our little timeline that we have on player profiles of 24-7. He visits that Saturday. He gets offered the middle week, visits on Saturday. He comes back for a handful of different spring practices, some of them planned, some of them not planned. You know, He just showed up kind of about 15 minutes beforehand. He told – couple of people, hey, I'll, I'll see you in Auburn soon. And then 15 minutes later, he was in Auburn. Um, and then he was back for a day and he took his official visits in June. He went to Alabama on June 2nd um, and he went to Auburn the weekend of June 16th. And so Auburn has kind of worked its way into this. He visited Auburn uh, there on June 16th. And after that visit, he said, look, they're neck and neck right now. It's it's pretty much 50-50. And when you're talking about, you, you're always cautious with an Alabama commit. But when you're talking about, Perry Thompson and how things have been shaping up when he said it was 50 50 in my mind or that they were even, I, I kind of felt like that's favoring Auburn, maybe a little bit like 51 49, like as close as it can get. Um, and it's, it's certainly noteworthy that he's coming back for big cat weekend just because Alabama, it's not as big as what big cat necessarily is. Alabama doesn't have a huge recruiting event, not necessarily a signature event, but they're, they're planning to do something that Saturday so he had an invite, obviously, to go to Alabama on Saturday, July 29th, and he's going to Auburn. Um, and it was, it was just pretty surprising on Sunday. Um, ironically, I was talking to Perry um, through DM no more than 10 minutes before he actually tweeted it out, um, asking him, getting a quote, which subscribers at Auburn Undercover will see on Monday, getting a quote on kind of what's important to him about a final decision when it comes down to actually making a final decision. Um, and he hadn't really said anything about where he was planning to go. And Jason, in all honesty, I didn't think we were going to know. I didn't think any reporter would really have a great idea of where he was headed on July 29th until July 29th, just in all honesty. And I'd even put that on our board when someone asked me earlier, when we started up the, uh, big cat running visitor list, I was like, look, I don't know him, Perry. I haven't heard from him yet. Um, and I just don't think we're going to have a good idea necessarily of where he's headed until July 29th. Now, you mentioned it. There's a long way to go until December. 
there's a long way to go until July 29th, too, to be honest. I'm sure Alabama will keep pushing for him to be there on July 29th. Alabama will push for him to be there that week. It's open that whole week, so he could theoretically still go up there for an unofficial visit or something like that. Uh, but this is certainly news that bodes well for Auburn. Jason, I think we both agree, and you can chime in here a little bit. I think we both agree maybe 51-49 Auburn right now, maybe favor Auburn a little bit, but cautiously. Yeah, yeah. Somebody asked if they – if I thought he was Auburn to lose, I said, "Whoa, I'm not going that far, not yet." <laughs> um, but but I do feel I do feel like it, that Auburn. You're right, Auburn might be slightly ahead at the moment. Um, but this is one that's going to go back and forth. It's going to be battle to the end. But yeah, I, I you know, we, we talked about it um, when the staff arrived. They had to put themselves in a position to compete for the best players in the state of, state of Alabama. They have done that. Um, they they won a battle. Last year for, you know, uh, Keldry Falk. Um, can you win a couple of more battles this year and um, keep growing and building that roster? That's the key, and, and this is one of those battles that if you were to win would be would be massive for the future of the program. Yeah, and that's the thing. He says he plans to have a final decision before his senior season, which kicks off there fully on August 25th. No matter which way he decides, the other school is not going to stop recruiting him. Um, until December, they're going to keep doing everything in their power, whether that's Auburn or Alabama, and the other school is going to have to hold on. Um, and then, you know, you want to talk about battles a little bit. I think that's a good transition. We'll talk about uh, we're recording this late Sunday, July 2nd, probably over the next week or two, should have a couple more commitments on the list. We'll start with Malik Blockton, um, the Pike Road defensive lineman, because he's a guy that we know what date he's committing. He's committing on uh, Saturday, July 8th. And it is down to Auburn and Texas. This is a kid, Jason, that I think we both agree Auburn sits in a pretty good spot with. Texas definitely has kind of made a surge um, and did so during his official visit in June. He'll officially visit Auburn um, during the season with his older brother, Marcus Harris, playing. He's been a frequent, frequent visitor at Auburn. I don't think there's any recruit out there that's been to Auburn more than Malik Blockton. Um, and I personally, I see him ending up in Auburn's class within the next week here. Yeah, I, I'd still be very surprised if it if it was Texas, uh, even though they've made a push. Um, I, it would still surprise me. He's a guy that has has you know, not only been around this Auburn program a lot because of his his brother, he's also a guy that already knew Hugh Freeze and Jeremy Garrett because Liberty was recruiting him as well early on. He made a trip to Liberty. He, he got to see them. So he knew them before they ever got to Auburn. To me, that's a big deal as well. Um, um, and, you know, I, I think – I mean, even though you say the right things sometimes about travel and distance, those kind of things, in the end, it's it's hard to to pass up 35 minutes down the road to to to, to come to games, um, to be around, to do all those things that are really important from from a family perspective. And so that's why I'd still I still lean towards Auburn. Uh, I think Texas is is in the picture, but I, I'd still be surprised in the end if if it wasn't Auburn here in, in about a week or so. Yeah, I'd agree with that. And Jason, this is a guy that you've seen play a little bit. Just for people that haven't gotten to see him a little bit, what's what's his play style? You know, I was talking with someone, um, and they honestly, someone at Auburn, and they honestly comped him pretty similar to Marcus Harris, where he's not going to be the flashiest player along the defensive line, but he's always making the right play. He's always in the right gap. He's always making the smart play along the defensive line. Is that something that you would kind of agree with there? Oh, I think you're muted. I think he has a. I think he has a little bit of Colby Wooden in him a little bit. Um, one of those guys that could play uh, kind of a tweener role in between, maybe a true tackle or, or defensive end at times. So I think he can can do some of those same things. Um, and the thing about him, it, where it's very similar to his brother, where he's very similar to to his brother Marcus Harris, is that it's been a gradual thing for him now he's he's come on the scene a lot more Marcus ended up was at Kansas first before he came back to Auburn so Marcus was a guy that wasn't as big until he got to Kansas he was you know 6'2 235 much different player uh, Malik's a bigger body bigger kid and has grown and matured uh, the thing I like about him is that it, he wasn't the dominant player as a sophomore he's been good and he's played with some really good players uh, there at Pike Road but he's continuously worked on his craft. So I think the thing – that's why it reminds me a little bit of Colby Wooden, where you look up and you go, man, he's in the right spots, he plays hard, he does the right things. 
Um, yeah, so I, I think he's he's a guy that has a tremendous amount of upside just because um, I think his floor is really high. And so, to me, he's a guy that's going to be able to play and going to be able to contribute, you know, probably pretty early. May not be an All-American his first year, but I think he's a guy that, that's going to help out a football team pretty quickly. Yeah, we'll stick in state. Uh, let's go up to Clay Chalkville, uh, DJ Barber, D'Angelo Barber, um, the linebacker there. This is a guy that Auburn's staff, Josh Aldridge, um, Hugh Freeze, offered him back at the massive junior day in January. Really has just kind of picked up since then. Um, and you know, we expect him to come off the board within the next couple of weeks. He doesn't have a decision date locked in like Malik does, um, but we realistically think it could be really any day now. It could be as early as you know, you're listening to this on Monday the third. It could be as early as the fourth. We'll have to kind of wait and see. Um, but feel like Auburn sits in a pretty good spot there. He visited this picture, um, if you're watching on YouTube, is from the seven-on-seven seven camp that his team participated in. After that visit, he said, look, Auburn leads. I'm not even taking my official visit until the fall because I already know what Auburn is to me. Um, he went and visited Arkansas officially, went to Georgia Tech. He said Ole Miss is in the mix as well, but he publicly came out and said Auburn's his leader. He said, look, they're going to be pretty hard to beat. Um, and, you know, after he's taken those visits to these other schools, Jason, it still seems like Auburn sits in the pole position to land him here whenever he decides to come off the board. Yeah, I think so, too. Uh, I, it, it certainly feels that way. I think Auburn made a push um, with that crew at Clay Chalkville when they were on campus. And then D.J. Barber's a guy that they've liked really from the get beginning. Um, athletic, versatile linebacker. Uh, and, and so, yeah, you start thinking about – um, positions, um, that's one of the spots. Um, you look at, at what Auburn's been able to do. Joseph Phillips is a guy that linebacker probably grows into an edge down the road as big as he is already, but he's a guy. So you, no matter what you're doing, you're looking – It's you know, I keep coming back to talent acquisition. You're, you're trying to get the best players you can get. It's great if they fit into those, those you know, areas where we, we need, you know, two linebackers and two corners, all those things – the best thing you better do is go get the best players you can get and then figure out where you're going to play them later. Um, DJ Barber is one of those players. He's a really talented guy um, and a tackling machine. And so it, this would be one that, you know, we've talked about it again in state. Um, the key, the key for Auburn football is to have a presence in the state of Alabama. If you were to add a DJ Barber to, to what you've already done in this class and the potential for what you could do moving forward, then that'd be a big deal. You know, we've got another guy on commit watch in the next couple of weeks here, but based on what you just said, I want to transition um, and actually jump to Demarcus Riddick next because I did my mock class on Sunday. And if you guys want to read that, go over to AuburnUndercover.com, my second one after um, after all those official visits happened. But it felt like Auburn was in a good spot with Demarcus Riddick. Felt like they were in a good spot with DJ Barber. Felt like they were in a good spot with Wyatt Simmons. Felt like they were in a good spot with Bradley Shaw. And I went ahead and put all those guys in my class. And I moved Wyatt Simmons over to the Jack linebacker. You know, maybe he could do some of that. Maybe even DeMarcus Riddick could yep. do some of that a little bit. It just feels like a position where Josh Aldridge has done a great job. And, you know, it, it will probably be tough if Auburn is able to somehow try and close on four of those guys there because guys looking around and they're saying, you know, do I want to commit with three other guys there? But after Auburn didn't take a high school linebacker in the 2023 class, Auburn has positioned itself well. And now it's really coming down to an Iron Bowl battle for DeMarcus Riddick, the five-star currently committed to Georgia, but looks like it's Auburn and Alabama, Jason. And he's going to have a final decision. Um, again, I say in quotes because no, no school is really going to give up on recruiting him, but he'll have a final decision on July 26th. And after his official visit to Auburn, after returning for the seven-on-seven -seven camp, Auburn has started to regain some of that momentum that it had earlier this year in his recruitment. Yeah, just a guy that um... – I think likes this staff. He liked the feel of Auburn. Um, you know, Chilton County, Clanton, Alabama, not a big city. Um, very similar feel to Auburn, I think. And I think that's a comfortable feel for a guy like DeMarcus Riddick. And honestly, I, I think knowing that you have a chance to come in and, and change things, um, I think it's a big deal for guys like that too. He's a guy that can go play anywhere he wants to, anywhere in the country. But to come in and be a game changer, for a school like Auburn, um, sometimes that is is really intriguing. Uh, I think Demarcus Riddick is not scared of that opportunity. Going, hey, look, I see what's being built. I want to be a part of that, and I want to help lead that. And and um, I think that's something that he believes in. And you know, again, Auburn's right there. Um, we've talked about it, and you know, 
I, I don't know that what percentage you'd put on any of them, but the percentage is that I think Auburn gets a few of these guys that they're in on that are top players in the state are pretty good. And that's where you want to be. You want to get your fair share of the top players in your own state. That's how Auburn football has been successful throughout history um, is by doing that in Alabama, doing that in Georgia, especially um, picking some you know, guys from Florida, Tennessee, Mississippi, but you got to get your fair share in Alabama and Georgia. If you want to compete with those two schools right now um, and, and win SEC championships and, and, and compete for national championships again, guys like, you know, Perry Thompson, Demarcus Reddick, Cam Coleman, that Auburn's in on, those are the kind of guys that you have to win a few of those battles. Yeah, we're – I mean, we're absolutely rolling in transitions now because you talked about the state of Georgia. That leads me right into the last guy that we wanted to specifically touch on in Jalen Crawford, um, the four-star top 247 cornerback um, out of Parkview there who officially visited Auburn, LSU, and Florida in June. We knew he was planning to have a decision in July. feel like it will probably come within the next couple of weeks here. Um, I think he picked up an Auburn prediction somewhere else, and people were asking on our board, you know, what's going on with him? I've had a crystal ball in for him since March. Still feel pretty good about that. Um, this is a guy that Zach Etheridge and Coach Crime have really zeroed in on, and it's it's a guy that it feels like Auburn should be able to get into the fold here within the next couple of weeks, and you feel pretty confident about getting DJ Barber and Malik Blockton. feel pretty good about getting Jalen Crawford. You feel like you can maybe get all those guys before Big Cat Weekend, maybe a toss up there with the Marcus Riddick on July 26th before big cat. So Auburn's got some potential to kind of carry through the month of July a little bit, keep this dead period, uh, not momentum, but keep active during the dead period, keep the fans engaged, keep everybody rolling and then see what happens at big cat weekend. Yeah. You know, the month of July now becomes one of the bigger months uh, of the recruiting cycle because of the visits that happen in June the dead period, you have that final week, then it becomes dead again as teams start to practice. Colleges get into their practice cycle, um, game playing, all those things. This becomes the time when when guys want to make decisions before their senior years. They've had the visits. They've had six or seven months of visits sometimes for, for these kids in visiting schools multiple times. Um, this becomes a very interesting and, and very important month for the Auburn Tigers. And you mentioned – you know, Jalen Crawford, the guy that we saw in January, we talked to. He's made multiple visits to Auburn since then. Um, a very versatile DB. This is a guy that can play multiple positions, can play corner, can play nickel. Heck, he probably play safety if you want him to. He can play all over. Those are the types of players that this staff covets. Um, they covet versatility. And Jalen Crawford is one of those guys. And so, um, yeah, the, these are the battles. Again, go back to it. Got to win some of these. He's a very highly sought after guy. Um, LSU, um, among other schools, are in a the mix there for, for a guy like Jalen Crawford. So, uh, but again, I like Auburn. I like Auburn's chances to 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 win this battle just because the feel you get a feel when you when you talk to Jalen Crawford that there's something there for Auburn that he really likes. Yeah, feels like Auburn's in a good spot to start picking up some of that momentum going into Big Cat, which we are still a handful of weeks out from Big Cat. Um, but we already got our running list of visitors rolling over at AuburnUndercover.com, um, and that's VIP if you want to go check that out. But we'll touch on just we'll touch on it just a little bit. Obviously, we already talked about Perry Thompson. All of pretty much almost all of Auburn's commits um, or all of them should realistically be there. Uh, Walker White's planning to be there. Should be able to get Joseph Phillips there. All those guys who can help recruit for Auburn should be a good group of 2025s coming in. Um, I talked with Zion Grady, the five-star from Charles Henderson, who plans to be there. Um, and one of the other big names that I think we could touch on real quick, Jason, because um, our national guy, Steve Wilfon, reported on it earlier on Sunday, K.J. Bolden. Um, Dukes had reported it. He had scooped it earlier in the week that K.J. Bolden was planning to be a big cat. And then Steve Wilfon confirmed it on Sunday and also confirmed he's got a uh, commitment date locked in for August 5th. Feels like Auburn's a bit of a long shot there. Georgia's definitely the pretty heavy favorite. Ohio State and Alabama are in the mix as well, but this is Auburn's chance to keep hanging around a little bit. Even if you can't land him August 5th, make sure that he's still that he's still locked in for that official visit. Um, I believe it's the weekend of the Georgia game. Try and get him back there on campus and just try and keep working. Try and keep chipping away a little bit. Zach Etheridge has had some major pulls over the past couple of years for Auburn. Coach Crime has obviously had a very successful recruiting history. 
and this is one of Hugh Freeze's kind of top guys. So it's at least somewhat significant that he is coming out for Big Cat Weekend. Yeah, and you're, you're right. That it's, it is one of the things you have to do nowadays. You have to keep yourself in the hunt, uh, and especially in year one of a coaching staff because you look at it, um, you start telling them, hey, here's what we want to do. This is what we want to look like. Well, you go out and show some of those things early, and you, you beat an LSU, uh, do something like that, beat a Georgia. You, all of a sudden, it changes everything about a program, about um, – what, how players see a program, about how players see the potential. Right now you're telling them, and you've shown them, and you, you've shown them some things at Ole Miss and Liberty and then those things. To show it at Auburn, however, this fall could mean a much more different scenario for Auburn recruiting. So some of these guys, even if you, you're right, even if they say, hey, my mind's made up, they really liked Auburn, but they're like, uh, I'm still not quite sure, though. I'm going to go ahead and commit somebody else. Go out and win one of those games or two of those games, and guys go, and they're going to do it. They're going to get it done. I want to be a part of it. You got to keep yourself in that hunt, in that, in that, and especially when you're going to get some some of those fall official visits, um, because we know how important, how impactful Jordan Hare Stadium, that crowd, everything can be um, for a guy like KJ Bolden. Um, yeah, even if you don't win, if you don't win the battle, you might win the war. Uh, you know, down the road. Even in the recruited sphere as well, you talk about momentum on the field. If you can get Demarcus Riddick on July 26th, if you can flip Perry Thompson at Big Cat Weekend or something like that, it, let's say you pull off both of those wins, and KJ Bolden wants, watches Perry Thompson flip from Alabama to Auburn on at Big Cat Weekend. Maybe he's sitting there thinking a little bit in the back of his head. You know what does he know? You know why is he doing this? Or, it, or hey, let, let's go create something special. Let's go. Yeah. Let's go put a class together that that's, that's going to do this in a hurry. Um, that's happened before. It's happened at Auburn. It's happened at a lot of places. Um, and you go, okay, let's 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 put this thing together. And having a guy like Walker White already on board could be really beneficial when you get him back on campus. And you have other guys that are committed to Mon Lane, and we've seen these guys that have already been been there. We've seen uh, Jamarian Burnett do a bunch of recruiting. We've seen Joseph Phillips say, hey, I want to be involved, do some of those things. All those guys help to continue to bring things together. But you're right. There's nothing like having a couple of those big guys go, boom, here we go. Um, that's That could be the, the, the game changer, so to speak, for this Auburn class if that were to happen here in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, so we'll see how it all shakes out. Seems like Auburn, not seems like, we know Auburn will pick up a couple of guys within the next couple of weeks. Auburn should pick up at least a couple of guys at Big Cat Weekend. Um, another name that I'm honestly keeping an eye on is J.J. Falk, who plans to be there. Um, I think he's a candidate to join that 2025 class, but we're going to have all that covered over at AuburnUndercover.com. Um, Jason, I think I'll wrap us up unless there's anything that I'm missing. I think we've touched on it all pretty well. Yeah, so I'll wrap it up. Yep. Um, yeah, that's good. Just uh, everybody have have a safe fourth. Um, if you're watching this on the fourth, be safe, be careful, uh, and uh, enjoy some time with with family and friends for sure. Yes, y'all go enjoy some time. Um, I know I will. I'll be out um, July seventh. I think is when I fly out. I'm going on a golf trip back home to Montana. So oh, plan to take. <laughs> we're, we're jealous of the weather that that awaits you. <laughs> yeah, this 105 degrees. Um, Jason and I went out and played. Um, on Friday, that was that was brutal, but in Montana, it's in the 80s. So looking forward to that a little bit. Looking forward to enjoying the dead period a little bit, but I don't think it'll be fully dead while I'm gone and hopefully should have some content on that as well. You know, we talked about Malik Blocked and maybe a couple other guys as well. So we'll be keeping you all, all covered over at AuburnUndercover.com. 15-year anniversary special is running until I think July 14th or July 15th, somewhere in there. 15 days. So. Yep. So 75% off. It's literally just over $2 a month to join. You cannot beat that price. It's over $26 for the whole year. This will get you covered all the way through next summer, all the way through next summer's official visits. Gets you covered for Big Cat Weekend. Gets it rolling right before media days there in Nashville, which we'll all be at. I'll be back in time for that as well. So make sure to come check us out over at AuburnUndercover.com if you're not already there. And we will catch you guys in the next